Welcome back, guys, to another roundtable. My name is Adam. With me today, Hi, Juan. Victor. Bruce Hello. Lane. Thank you once again for joining us. And at this roundtable, we're going to talk about 10 things to consider before you buy any ETF. So I yep. think when it comes to ETFs, I mean, popular way to invest. You yep. just kind of like diversify into a basket of stocks. Um, it's an easy way to invest. It's a, a lazy, way to, lazy invest. way to invest. But even though it's kind of lazy, there's still things that you need to consider before you buy an ETF. Yep. It's just not just buy anything that you see. So this is what we want to talk about today because there are actually 10, 10 things that we think that every investor should have a look. So we're going to go through all of them and I hope that at the end of it, you'll learn something about what to do before you actually pick an ETF. All right. Yep. So first things first, uh, what's the first thing that you should consider before you buy an ETF? I think it's your goal. What okay. kind of ETF do you want to hold? Yes. There's a lot of ETF out there. Uh, I mean, it's a very big market. I think Rusmi have the data. Of yeah, the I think there's close to 7,000 of ETFs for yep. you to choose as of 2020. In the, in the world. Stuff. In the world. 7,000. So 7, it's not as simple as just picking an ETF. So there's 7,000 out there. <laughs> and you got to yes. pick something that matches your investment goals and your risk yep. profile. Yes. Because yeah. if, let's just say, for example, you, want a, you have a dividend strategy, yep. investing yep. in a growth ETF doesn't make sense or investing in yeah. renewable energy doesn't make sense. Yep. Yes. So yeah. you want to pick something that's similar to what you are looking for mm. and that matches your risk profile. Yep. Yeah. And you have to choose like, do you want a world specific mm. or emerging market or a specific country ETF, right? Uh, and there are also different type of strategy ETF like value investing, growth investing, you know, different types of, you know, they, there are many ways to form an ETF, There's right? There's also thematic yeah. Yeah. ETF. Thematics, yeah. ETF. Uh, factor investing yep. there are factor ETF as well yep. and there are also sector ETF like you know if you're into like let's say EV you know yep. you can actually choose to invest into EV, yep. e electric vehicle e kind oh, of in China right. Tech we covered that yeah. Yeah, before yep. as well whether uh, you yeah. have exposure to China yes. Tech companies yeah. as well yeah. so obviously if someone is going to invest in China Tech they have to be comfortable with China tech companies in the first place before you buy the ETF. Yes. yes. Not buy it just because it's diversified. Yep. Yeah. So it's something that you want to match. So that's the first thing you need to consider. ETFs are a great investment tool, but you got to pick the right tools to match yep. you. All right. So yeah, that's I think the, the most thing. important yeah. thing is you must, you know, sleep well when you buy the sleep, ETF. Right? Yeah, you'll sleep well. So yeah. that's the litmus test. Yep. If you can't sleep, something's probably not right. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For yeah, you. Taking uh, too much risk. Yeah. Right. For yourself, right? Yep. And that, that's different for everyone. So that's the first thing you want to look out for. What's the next thing that you need to consider when you buy an ETF? The asset within the ETF itself, because okay. each ETF has different type of uh, companies within embedded in the ETF, right? Yep. So yep. Uh, if we look at certain ETFs like, you know, QQQ, uh, they're just going to be focusing a lot on all the tax. US, yep. US tech. US right? tech. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So then you have the CQQQ. Yeah, right, yeah. on the Chinese tech, right? Mm -hmm. I think just now we were talking about that the CQQQ, you want to expose to Chinese tech, but there's no Alibaba inside. Yeah, so I right. think that's the thing that uh, some of our readers have pointed out or asked us that the CQQQ is, a, is, a, is another ETF that yep. allows you to like, give you exposure to Chinese tech, but it doesn't have Alibaba in it. So yep. let's just say you want to, you just don't look at what the ETF owns mm. and you kind of just buy it and then you realize that yep. Alibaba is not in it, but you, you <laughs> want exposure to Alibaba, then it, that kind of doesn't match yeah. what you're looking for. Yep. So you've got to find an ETF that actually has the assets that you want. Always have a look at the top 10 holdings, right? Yep. Yeah, you can just simply go to the download the ETF they're interested, download their fact sheet, and then yeah. you know, and study yeah. the con top 10 constitution. Yeah. These are the basically the 10 largest. Yeah, yeah but Alibaba yeah. is not in the CQQQ. For the CQQQ. So yeah. there are other ETFs that have Alibaba. So yeah. I think if someone kind of wants exposure to Chinese tech, you kind of want Alibaba in it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. In, the, in that sense. And not just the assets that they have, but the allocations, whether you're comfortable with that. Because yep. there are different yeah. weights yep. and all that. And that mm. actually kind of plays a role as well, what you're comfortable yep. with. So that's the second thing. You want to make sure that, you know, the ETF owns the assets yep. that you kind of like agree with yep. and you're comfortable with in the weights that yep. they have. And so far when we talk about the assets, it's usually the equities. Yeah. Right? Yes. But just now Adam talked about uh, dividend. Some yep. people may have, or may buy into like bonds. Yep. ETF. Yeah. So these are the better they're, they're even, type. Yeah, they're even yeah. like commodity yeah. type ETFs, ETFs and yeah. all that. Yeah. yeah. So there are many different ETFs as well. All right. So that's number two. Number three, what's the next thing you need to go for? The the type of uh, ETF. Is it physical ETF or synthetic ETF? Okay. So basically, physical ETF is uh, when you invest in this ETF, they, if they say they are, they are physical, that means they, they bought all the stocks that mm. is underlining in the index. So example, SPY. Yeah. So SPY is a physical ETF where they buy uh, every single company inside the S&P 500. Using right? the fund, ETF fund. Using the yeah. ETF fund. Yeah. Then you have the synthetic uh, ETF. So the synthetic e ETF, they don't literally uh, buy every single 
uh, stocks, mm-hmm. right? They are basically you are buying a contract. Mm. So it's a swap yep. right, between a counterparty. So there's some risk to the synthetic ETF. Basically, uh, the counterparty risk. So if your counterparty default, that goes your ETF. Yep. Right? But the good thing about synthetic ETF is that the tracking uh, error is actually... Uh, lower. much lower, lower. Okay. because they give yeah. you the exact index return and there are certain ETFs like say oil yep. you can't possibly do a physical ETF yeah, I don't want to buy a <laughs> barrel of oil and no, put it at home yeah, no, no, no <laughs> ETF is going to buy that oil and yeah. store it because yeah. oil needs to be used yeah. and you know mm. for industry and everything yep. so they usually use a synthetic ETF correct, correct. for oil but for gold mm. you actually have physical yes, gold correct. ETF yeah. and synthetic as well yeah. so I think for most people if you're like kind of like plain vanilla investor you kind of like prefer the physical, the physical ETF yep. because you literally buy that asset Sets, yeah. that you want to hold. Yeah. So most people would kind of go there, but there are advantages to the synthetic uh, ETFs yeah, as correct. well. So what's the next thing you want to look out for when you buy an ETF? The Which, tracking error. The tracking error. Oh, uh, the tracking or, difference. Or the tracking difference. They yeah. call it. Right. So, so the difference between the 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 index, index value and the price of the ETF. So you want yeah. you want that to be as close as yes, possible correct. because yeah. the the index are. Uh, Returns right won't be exactly the same. It will always be lower than the, uh, sorry, the 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 ETF will always be lower than the actual index. Yeah. Right. Because there's this all the different expenses that there's some inside. friction. Yeah. yeah great yeah. friction, right? Yeah, but of course this only applies to those that have ETF that has a track record. Those newly listed ETF, I think right. you don't really you can't really see or know what is the track tracking differences. Yeah. Yep. So the basically track. the rule of thumb is you want the tracking difference to be as small as, as small as possible. Because yes. if the ETF, if the index goes up 10%, you want to make 10%, yep. and yeah. not 9%. Yeah. So you want to go is maybe 9.99 is fine. Yeah, 0.0 yeah. 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 And you can find this information in the fact sheet as well okay. for the most ETFs. All right, yeah. so we covered four so far. What's the next thing that uh, we need to look out for when it uh, comes to? Liquidity and size. So yeah. you want to buy those uh, ETFs that are quite sizable. Yep. I think Correct. you're talking about billions in terms of uh, asset under management, the yeah. AUM. Uh, so and of course the the size so that's the size right liquidity also is like you know the bigger that you ETF is then the more daily transaction mm. uh, you know it's yep. very, very easy for you to buy or sell yeah, right? yeah. so it's more yeah. liquid in that sense. I mean the yeah. size is important because yeah. the fund manager have to make money out of the AUM yep. because that's the management fee so yeah. if the size is too small it's not profitable not profitable for them mm-hmm. they will eventually close or liquidate the yeah. whole ET, uh, ETF yeah. so that is not really good for the investor so you must take one that is really very big right? yeah if that happens this is a huge really troublesome to kind of like get your money back yeah it's probably going to take you about one or two years to get back your money <laughs> yeah. right? one or two years is a really yeah. long time so that's the opportunity cost yeah right? so liquidity and size kind of important especially if uh, I think certain people they have an option strategy that comes with yep. the let's say the, the, the ETF yes, that they have yeah. as well so you the volume and the, the size of the ETF plays a role because if it's too small your options doesn't really work. The, the strategy doesn't yes, really correct. work as well. So that's liquidity and size. What's the next one? So we're look out for the dividends, whether it's distribute or accumulate. Okay, so I just give a brief about what's distribute. So distribute is basically, uh, they pay you the dividend directly yeah. to your account, right? Accumulating means that uh, instead of them paying you the dividend, they reinvest into uh, buying the index and this save up a lot on the transaction cost. Mm-hmm. So if you are those people who are very into you know regular income or passive income, then I think you should choose distrib- distributing ETF. Yeah, right? yeah. If you are those who like to maximize your future investment returns, then uh, accumulating does fits your criteria. So you kind of reinvest the dividends into, yes, the, right. into the ETF again and again. Yeah, yeah. and so you save that, out on the transaction cost. That, that does that automatically for you. Yes, correct. So I think for the S&P 500, I think there are a few... Uh, I think if you have a look at the uh, options out there, they usually have like a DIS or ACC yep. bracket at the end. So that tells you whether that ETF is a distribution kind of ETF or accumulation yep. kind of ETF as but well. But do take note that you still get tax even though it's yeah, accumulating. Yeah, that's right. right. So if you think that um, accumulating the dividends will allow you to you know, sidestep the with dividend withholding tax. So for example, if you invest in for foreigners and for us, like yep. anyway, foreigners in investing in the US, we get a 30% withholding tax. You can't avoid that, even yep. if the ETF is yep. accumulating for you. Yeah. Yep. All right. So that's uh, one thing you need to consider as well. Yeah. Yep. So what's the next one? Currency risk, right? So uh, currency risk is something that um, I think is hard for you to avoid. But uh, if you're investing into the US based type ETF, uh, you can't really remove it, mm-hmm. but there are certain ETF that trade in your local currency. Okay. Yeah, so, but there's still underlying risk that you have. It, there's no way that you can actually reduce that. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, when you invest in the US, I mean, you just have to accept that you're investing in a 
yeah. foreign currency. Yes, correct. And that naturally comes with uh, In, forex risk. Inherent, yeah. yeah. And whether you're okay with that. So I think for most people, the USD is kind of stable. Maybe the euro as well, if you're considering some other ETFs as well. Yep. Yeah. So I think the when it comes to currency risk, you just have to be aware of the forex risk. Yeah. Uh, but then there, I think the S and P five hundred comes in different flavors as well. So you have the some in USD, some in euros. I think some in uh, British pounds as well. Yep. So yeah. that currency choice actually may be more suitable for you when it comes to your own investment yeah. account. Correct. Is this a is this a personal thing? But so there's still currency risk. There's down. still currency risk because the underlying asset is still, still in USD. In that USD for the S and P five hundred and whatever else you are looking at. All right, so that's uh, currency risk and choice. So anything else? Uh, what's the next thing you need to look out for? Uh, domicile and taxes. Okay. Yeah, so you must see uh, where your ETF is domicile. Mm -hmm. So if your ETF is domicile in the US, then you have a 30% withholding tax on your dividend. Yeah. And on top of that, if you know, a, you death and yeah. pass on, yeah. you know, you got an estate tax. Yeah, so we did a video, I think, very recently on uh, US estate tax. Yeah. Uh, if you pass on up to 40%. Tax on your US assets, which is really expensive. Yep. Yeah. So we did a roundtable on that and how you can actually legally avoid that or strategies to help you minimize that. Uh, do check it out if you're interested in that. But yeah, the domicile of the ETFs play a role as well. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's not just the underlying stocks, but for example, the S and P 500 stocks are all in the US, but you can choose an Irish domicile ETF to reduce your withholding tax. Yeah. To yeah. 15 percent. To 15 percent. Yep. And yeah. Yep. And certain uh, ETFs, if they're from Singapore. Yep. They have no taxes, no taxes at all. Correct. Yeah. 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 The next thing they look at, of course, is the expense ratio, right? Okay. So this is the cost of the ETF that you that helps you to diversify your portfolio, right? So generally for ETF, the costs are more efficient compared to the normal index, mm -hmm. uh, so called the uh, the mutual fund, funds, mutual yep. funds, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, which typically charge one to two percent, uh, but the ETF I think uh, is about less than zero point five percent, or there are some that are higher, some mm -hmm. that are lower. Okay, so but generally for fees ETF you want to go for those as lowest in term of the ETF so the biggest one are usually tends to have lower uh, yeah. expense fees okay Again, I mean, you have to check I yeah. mean to give a, a example so if you look at uh, yeah. SPY yeah. versus the VOO so SPY will have a expense ratio about 0.09 percent then VOO is about 0.03%. Yep. So we can expect both of them to get the same returns because yeah. both of them are tracking the, the, the index, yeah. right? Mm. right? So over a long term, you can expect uh, VOO to outperform a bit better than SPY because of the low SPS yeah. ratio. Don't, yeah, don't underestimate this uh, percentage because mm. uh, 1% of expense ratio will cost you every $100,000 of investment that earns you 6% yeah. a year yeah. will cost you about $152,000 in the 30 years time. If you drag it to 40 years, it will cost you probably, I think, $350,000. Yeah. So fees do make a difference. Yeah, big, big difference. Over a long period. It impacts yeah. your returns. Yeah, it impacts your returns. Return. So yeah. if, if it's a, essentially the same ETF, kind yeah. of you go with the cheaper one. Yep. Yes. I mean, you got to think about the other but factors. That we don't the, the size and everything. All. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say we assume the zero point one eight percent kind of ETF expense ratio is is the same uh, hundred thousand investment with six percent return a year. It's gonna cost you only like uh, substantially way lower if you are looking at a forty years horizon. It's gonna cost you like uh, sixty thousand versus three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it can get can get quite expensive. Yes. Yep. So generally, go just go for those low cost ETF. Okay. Right? Lower the better. All right. So we've covered nine so far. What's the last thing that you want the to look for? The reputation of the ETF provider. Okay. Okay. I think the track record the ETF provider is very important. So, uh, it, for personally, if I were to invest in ETF, I make sure that the ETF providers are the bigger player. Mm -hmm and also uh, have a long-term track record in uh, managing yeah. the ETF. So, so I think what yeah. are the bigger players? Gen generally, yeah. the, the three biggest ones are Vanguard, iShares, and State Street. Mm -hmm. I think these are the three giants in the ETF yeah. industry. Okay, yep. So I think it's hard to go wrong with them because these uh, guys have been around for the last yep. more than 30 years. Sorry. Vanguard especially, the lowest cost yeah. uh, in terms of ETF. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. all these all these top three players, right? Uh, they have the first mover advantage mm -hmm. because they have the first mover advantage. So most of the funds are flow into their ETF. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when most of funds go in, it's hard for the ETF to liquidate actually. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And then if everyone's in it, it kind of like, yeah, I mean, kind of safe in that sense. Economies yeah, of correct. scale. Yeah. Economies yeah. of scale yeah. and all that stuff. So I think, uh, yeah, I think that plays a huge role as well because if you're going to choose like some ETF provider that you don't really know, yep. a little bit risky, right? If <laughs> yep. you don't know much about them. Yeah, it was not, nothing will happen to your money. It's just okay. that once they close down, liquidate, you need to, it takes time for you That's to get back your money. Yeah. yeah. 
So I just want to make sure that uh, and to make clear that you know even if the ETF provider like just goes away, your funds are still safe because it's in a separate account. Yep. All the ETFs are yeah. there. So that's where your money is. But then, of course, to take it out, like you're saying, it's a huge asshole. Yes. It may not be worth it. All right, so I think we've covered the 10 things that you want to look out for. We're going to summarize it in a table uh, on this video on some screen over here. So uh, basically, is what are your investment goals and your risk profile, whether yep. it matches that ETF, what are the asset allocations uh, that ETF has, what is physical or synthetic replication, what is the tracking difference, what is the liquidity in size, yep. right? Uh, whether it's a dis it distributes or accumulates the dividends, what is the currency risk and the choice that you have, yep. the domicile and taxes, the expense ratio, of course, the reputation of ETF providers. So as you can see, quite a lot of things you want to look out for when you look at the ETF, not just a simple thing as I want to buy this yes. and close your eyes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so I think it's just like, there's a little bit of analysis that goes into ETFs. Not, I mean, when you look at a stock as well, yep. yeah. not you as much as You should treat ETF stock. like a stock. You know? Yeah, in a way, but it's kind of like a simpler way, but you still need to do a bit of homework yep. to yeah. see that this is kind of like, matches you and your risk profile and all of that yeah. stuff. Yeah, so I think that was a pretty good wrap up for ETF. So I think if you're looking at ETFs right now, I hope this was really, really useful uh, to help you consider. So stick with all these factors. Uh, probably there are other things you might look out for, but these are the kind of like the main things that we kind of like look yeah, for Yeah, maybe ourselves. you guys can share with us, you know. Yeah, in your comments as well, what are the things yeah. you look out for. So I think uh, this yeah. is a pretty good wrap up. All right, so once again, my name is Adam, this is Victor. Thank you. Thank Rosemary, you. Thank you so much for joining us once again. If you like this video, please let us know, hit the like button, and of course, subscribe to our channel. Many more roundtables coming up. Any comments, questions about ETFs, uh, let us know as well. And we'll see you around again.